Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's discuss two of my favorite treatments for SIBO, one of which are herbal antimicrobials. And excitingly, a study was just published comparing the herb berberine to rifaximin, finding that for long-term resolution of SIBO, the herb berberine was actually more effective than the very popular antibiotic rifaximin. So we'll cover more on that study and also another treatment that I think is very effective, the elemental diet and a corresponding additional study published showing us how effective that treatment can be. Now, if you have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or you've heard of SIBO, you may already know that there are three types of gas that typically become elevated, either hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide, or methane. And because the overgrowth tends to occur in the small intestine, I say tends because methane can overgrow in the large intestine or the small intestine. Uh, without getting too into the weeds, because there is a degree of small intestinal involvement, this might be why SIBO can be so problematic. Some evidence has shown that bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine can actually damage the the microvilli in a fashion that's similar to celiac disease. And so this can thwart the production of things like enzymes and might be part of the reason why some people notice food intolerance. This might be carbohydrate malabsorption or maldigestion due to the fact that the villi secrete enzymes to digest those carbohydrates. So there's a path here towards resolution if we can remedy the SIBO. And then beyond that, if there is this chronic inflammatory response in the intestinal tract, which can occur with SIBO, remember that the immune system and inflammation are, are sort of two different sides of the same coin. And inflammation can lead to things like brain fog, fatigue, low mood. And then, of course, things like food intolerances, especially carbohydrates, leading to things like gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, pain, and reflux. And by the way, if this has been helpful, please comment and subscribe. This really helps us get this information to more people and hopefully helps them improve their gut health. So then this brings us to our first study in terms of what are the tools to remedy SIBO. And the first is a elemental diet. This is a complete meal replacement that is liquid, formulated to absorb very easily Hence, both giving the GI tract a rest, but simultaneously starving overgrowth because the foodstuffs tend to absorb in the first one to three feet of the small intestine, leaving the remaining 19 or so feet of the small intestine free to sort of rest and heal. This trial comes from Mark Pimentel's group, published just this year. 30 patients with SIBO and or methane overgrowth, they were given a pre-post SIBO breath test using lactulose. Look at this. The eradication rate ranged anywhere from 60% up through to 100%. What did they do? They gave people an elemental diet as their sole food for two weeks. Now, I do feel that this application of the elemental diet is a little bit overkill. If you wanted to do it, if you feel great while doing a prolonged elemental diet, two weeks, you can. But there's a lot of research in a different but similar condition, inflammatory bowel disease, so think Crohn's ulcerative colitis, that uses a different application. And this is what we're doing at the clinic, and at least anecdotally works very well for SIBO, IBS, food reactivity, and the like. This is what's known in the research literature as a hybrid. And how this has been done in some of the research studies is you have a large group of people with inflammatory bowel disease, and half of them get no treatment. The other half, they're told, replace roughly half of your food in a day with these elemental shakes. This is easy to do. A lot of people prefer a shake, let's say, in the morning anyway, and maybe another one post-workout. So some people might already essentially be doing a hybrid meal replacement shake. All they'd have to do is swap that in with an elemental diet to do what's been done in a number of trials 
in inflammatory bowel disease, which have shown very good outcomes. And specifically the way we do this at the clinic, and we do have a trial lined up to study this and hopefully publish on this. We start off with what we call a two to four day reset, meaning attempt to be only on the elemental diet for two to four days as the reset. Then from there, replace half your calories roughly per day from the elemental shakes. And then the other half can be whatever diet you're on, low FODMAP, candida diet, whatever it is. This seems to work very well, and it's not as high of a bar as the two-week exclusive. Nonetheless, whether you do it two weeks exclusively, the reset to the hybrid, whether it be anecdotally clinicians reporting results from patients or the small number of trials on SIBO directly, this is a win, the elemental diet for SIBO and for SIBO symptoms. Now, you might also be wondering, is this something suitable for candida? The context here is elemental diets, because they're using a fiber-free formula, knowing that fiber prebiotics, which feed bacteria, and FODMAPs can flare SIBO and symptoms, these formulas use simple carbohydrates. But while simple carbohydrates will not feed bacteria, they may feed fungus or candida. So the jury here is still out. There are two trials looking at elemental diets with those who have candida, finding either neutrality, meaning no impact, good or bad, or a benefit. You could always take this on a case-by-case -case basis, which is trial the elemental diet, and if for some reason you notice an exacerbation of your symptoms, it may not be the best fit for you. This is part of the reason why we have formulated a low carb version of the elemental diet, which might be more suitable for some. I'll also say that categorically for some people, the elemental diet is not a good fit. That's going to be the minority. That's a small subset. I would say estimating off the top of my head here, maybe 10% of people don't tolerate it. So uh, can certainly be a big win for people with SIBO maybe for people with candida or a fungal overgrowth. Okay, so the second tool, herbal antimicrobials. Antimicrobial meaning antibacterial, but can also be antifungal and maybe even antiparasitic. The study that was recently published that prompted me to showcase this tool, the herbal antimicrobials, looked specifically at berberine versus rifaximin. 38 patients with SIBO were given either rifaximin or berberine. And look at this, at two weeks, there was a similar eradication rate, 40% in either group, and symptomatic improvement, 80% in either group. So at a two-week follow-up, rifaximin versus berberine equivalent. This is where things get interesting. At the one month after ending treatment follow-up, this is a key time point because regression of SIBO and symptoms after treatment is somewhat common, maybe 40% of people. Estimates vary, but I think maybe the best is 40%. So at this time point, one month after ending treatment, the berberine group had a 52% eradication of SIBO. The rifaximin group only had a 29% resolution rate of SIBO. So there does seem to be superiority for the breath tests. Now to play the devil's advocate here, they both had similar rates of symptomatic resolution. What we don't know and what we could maybe infer is that there would be a higher rate in the future of symptomatic relapse in the rifaximin group because their breath tests were more likely to be positive, meaning the SIBO was coming back on the labs. All that being said, I think there's a really important caution here, which is that serial repeat SIBO breath testing I don't think is very helpful. My view is sure, if you wanna do a diagnostic workup at baseline for SIBO, fine. From there, I think it's best to listen to the individual and use their symptoms as how we gauge future treatment. With one caveat, the baseline level of SIBO, the, the higher the gas, might mean that you want to have a prolongated duration of treatment. 
So if the labs, let's take hydrogen for an example, if one person had a 40 point rise and another person had an 80 point rise, you might want to treat longer in the person with 80. And there's some preliminary data that loosely supports that. There are other trials on different herbal antimicrobials. It's not to say berberine is the end all be all. It does have some metabolic benefits, so there's merit there. However, berberine will cause, ironically, gastrointestinal upset in some people. So if you try berberine and it doesn't go well, it may provide a little bit of solace to know that two other trials have documented herbal blends can eradicate SIBO. One from 2014, Jerry Mullins, finding about a 40% resolution rate. And another paper, our paper, currently in peer review, hoping to be published soon, also showing roughly a 40% eradication rate of SIBO with two different sets of herbal blends. So all that to say, berberine, great, big fan of it. If you try it and doesn't feel good, then I would switch to something else because remember that not all people will tolerate berberine. So if you've gotten through the first few days, which for any treatment in antimicrobial therapy can be a little bit bumpy, right? You can have a little bit of an aggravation of your symptoms. But if you're beyond that, if you're getting to about a week and you're still noticing turbulence, pain, bloating, loose bowels, maybe skin reactions, joint pain, that may tell you that berberine just does not sit well with your system. And again, there's good news that other formulas have been shown to be similar in terms of their effect. So those are my two favorite tools. The Elemental Diet, which has documented, again, anywhere from a 60 to a 100% eradication rate for SIBO. Also remember that you can use a more relaxed application, at least per my clinical experience. And herbals, including but not limited to berberine, clocking in at about a 40 to 50% resolution weight rate. Can you use these together? Yes. In a lot of cases, we start with that two to four day elemental reset, followed by the half and half approach, the hybrid approach. Give people a number of weeks, check back in, see how they're doing. If that's working but not sufficiently, then we can layer on top of that a course of rifaximin of herbals. And the final point, just to reiterate, my view here, contentious, but I think there's a growing body of literature supporting this, that as it pertains to SIBO and the breath test therein, better to treat your symptoms than the labs. All right, this is Dr. Ruscio. Hope this helps. Talk to you next time. 